Hey y'all, welcome, hey welcome to Magic. I actually have to buy things today. Like I actually have to buy things today. Cause the last time I was here, I didn't buy nothing basically. I bought, I don't know. The last time I was supposed to be shopping for my new boutique, which I finally launched. I been, didn't buy anything though. And then I was supposed to buy for Brazen. I think I bought one thing. So yeah, I actually got to be productive today. It's ugly, but it ain't cute. Yeah, it ain't Brazen. How come it ain't? Tell me what. No, it is. Like, tell me like what doesn't relaxed. make it Brazen. It's supposed to relax. It's the look. Okay. It's, it's the look, bro. It's okay. just the design. That's it. It's just the design. So you feel like Brazen can't have this stuff? They can't have like detail. Is that what you're saying? I ain't saying that they can't have details, that's not this. This, this ain't, this ain't giving, this giving like old lady, like, this giving the grandma pattern, like, look. Dang, that's crazy. All right, moving on. Maybe like one half of the day being brazen, second half of the day being Melrose, because if I don't create a process for this, it's not gonna work out and I'm gonna leave here with nothing again, which I cannot do. So cute. <laughs> Y'all annoy. Y'all ain't no help. I do wanna get some sunglasses at some point though. I think I wanna sell accessories for um, Melrose. Some, some sunglasses, some hats, maybe some bags at some point. I don't know. Something that Brazen doesn't sell. My knees knocking. <laughs> it's like thicker. But see, the price point is what ends up being an issue. But I want to sell something that's like higher quality, but convincing the customer to pay the price that I would need to sell it for it would be the issue. So listen, so listen. So Brazen, I don't know if y'all know, but Brazen hit a million dollars recently. Yeah, but a big part of that is, or has been selling the inventory that everybody else is starting to sell. So now I have to like identify as something new not necessarily to replace what I've been selling, but like to create further stream of income because all of my money has come from something that everybody else is able to sell. But the year's looking good so far. No complaints as of yet. I'm gonna have a complaint at some point, I know it, but I ain't got one yet. Oh yeah. <laughs> this is cute. See, the issue is, see, and I be thinking too hard for other people. But I know, I'm saying, I be thinking too hard for other people because I be like, what would they wear underneath this? But then I be like, is that my problem? Or should I let them decide that? But then also, when I take the pictures for the website, I still have to figure that part out. Like, what do I put on underneath her? Some new underwear? and some pasties over her boobies. So, all right, if you're confused about that part, you just pull up a lot of pull-up pictures where females dress like this and you see what the most, what the majority got on a bundle. Okay, you make a valid point. You, you're, you're making sense. You're making a little sense, Derek. You might be the smart one here. You might be a little clever. It smell like onions over here. I feel like when we're shopping for inventory, we get overwhelmed very quickly because it's a lot to look at and like, we wanna buy everything. But one thing that I always remember is that fashion has trends and fashion has colors. So if you shop by either of those things, it's so much easier and you'll avoid a bunch of BS that really it's not gonna work out. So I use Pantone. I know you artsy people know what Pantone is. Anyway, every year, every season, they put out two reports, New York Fashion Week, London Fashion Week, and it tells you what colors are gonna be in for the season. Use that. Don't use your brain, because your brain don't know. 
use what they see, not what you think. And that's it. It makes so much sense. I'd be like, yeah, let me just copy what they said. Cause they basically telling you what they're gonna put in your face. Exactly. To attract, to make you wanna go back. Exactly. You so smart. Look at you. <laughs> Spring and summer. So yeah, I'm gonna stick with like the red, magenta, orange palette for now. Cause that's real cute. I'm not really a fan of blues and greens, but blues and greens sell really well. So we'll get there later in the season. I'm gonna stick with magenta, red, and orange for now. Period. Period. So I started coming to Magic in like 2017 when I used to work at my old job. It was a thrift store, but they had like boutique clothes in there. It was like half boutique, half thrift store. And the retail consultant that we had at the time convinced my boss to let me go to Magic. I knew nothing about Magic. I knew nothing about buying, nothing. But I went on their dime. And um, as a result, I keep coming. So when I started my boutique, or I was getting ready to start my boutique, I didn't even have my license yet. Shh, don't tell nobody. But I used my job's credentials to come. And they had a business license. You have to have a business license to come to Magic. So I used theirs. And I came and shopped for my boutique for the first time. Not having a plan, I didn't know what I was looking for. I didn't have no budget. I just bought stuff and that's it. So now it's like 2023 and I still come to Magic twice a year, sometimes more because they have shows in like New York and Nashville. I always come to the Vegas one, but I keep coming to it because it's a good way to just be inspired by like all the different styles and the colors and things like that. It's a great way to um, connect with vendors and just really stay up to date on like what's going on in the industry. So I think it's a good idea to keep coming. Even if you feel like you're just like overly experienced as a boutique owner, you still learn something. You still connect with new vendors. You still find new things every single time you come. So I'm gonna keep coming. You got it? Go ahead. <laughs> Back in the day, I used to not know what I was looking for because I really wasn't looking for anything in particular. I was just looking for merchandise. But now, because I have brand clarity, I know exactly what I am looking for, and I know exactly what I'm not looking for. So it's a lot easier for me to like sift through, like I can look at this and be like, nah, that's not it. We don't, we don't need that. Or I can look at a price tag, and I know that that price point is outside of my range, which means that I'm not gonna be able to sell it for a price that's appropriate for my customer. I usually have a plan of action as far as color, palette, and styles that I'm looking for. And even a budget, that's an important part because when I used to start, when I used to come, I didn't really know or have like an idea of how much money I was going to spend or how much money I could afford to spend. Now I'm very clear about it. And on top of that, I'm really clear about how that budget is gonna be allocated. So like I know how much of my budget is gonna be used for bottoms versus how much is gonna be used for tops. I know that I don't need any jumpsuits. I know I don't need any dresses because traditionally speaking, or like analytically speaking, I don't need those things. My data actually tells me that. So I would say I'm a lot more smart about buying at this point in business. I don't waste as much time. I also don't waste as much money. And those two things are really important as a business owner. So it's a breeze-ish. Still, you still have to sift through it all, obviously, but I feel like I have a lot more guidance and direction that helps to make it a more seamless process. So it's fun, still stressful, I'm not gonna lie, but I get it done. <laughs> oh my God, whose grass wall is this? I don't want them to hear me talk about it. So, y'all know how y'all all like to utilize grass walls. Can I just tell y'all that they do absolutely nothing for y'all? Like, honestly, it looks like you're in a garden, but you don't sell like clothes that you wear in a garden. And it's just like, it's just not, it's not, it's not communicating what you think it's communicating. It's not conveying what you think it's, it's not conveying anything if we're being honest, honestly, like, it's not doing much of anything to sell your merchandise. It's honestly a distraction if we're being totally honest. And then y'all throw the, the neon light on it. All I'm saying is, I'm gonna need y'all to get some brand direction, some brand guidelines, 
something, child. I don't know. Anything other than this grass wall. Anything. Please. Please. Huh. The question that I get asked all the time is how to price your inventory strategically. Because people think that having a low price is just e the easy way to sell merchandise, and that's not true. So when you're thinking about pricing your merchandise strategically, you need to know two things. So one, how much is your customer willing to pay for that product? And two, what do you want your profit margin to be on that product? So when I am shopping for merchandise, I obviously look at the price tag of the product. So this is a set, meaning that the prices are separate. One of the pieces is $19.75 and the other price is $18. I use this calculator it is literally for the purpose of pricing products with margins taken into consideration and what I like to ask myself is how much would my customer pay for this or how much do I think that they would pay for this so I might say that I think my customer would pay let's say $50 for this totally random but let's say it's $50 let's say that I want to have a profit margin of like 70% so to have a product price at $50 with a 70% margin, I would need to buy it for $15. This is clearly gonna cost me more than $15, meaning that this is outside of my budget and it's also gonna end up being outside of my customer's price point. So use a calculator, that's the answer, first and foremost, but also know how much your customer would pay and what you want your profit margin to be. And that's it. Uh, wear comfortable shoes. Trying to be cute. Child, listen. I mean, they ain't that bad, but they bad. So another question that I get asked all the time is, how often should you buy new inventory? And then also, how often should you drop new arrivals? So the answer to both of those questions is gonna be, when you can afford to buy new inventory, but also when it makes sense for you to buy new inventory. And what I mean by that is, is your inventory selling or is it not? If your inventory is not moving, it makes no sense for you to buy more of it. It makes more sense for you to focus on marketing and figuring out what you're doing wrong or what you can improve upon to actually move that inventory. So there's no right or wrong time, no one week, no two weeks, no one month. It's really about what makes sense for your business, what makes sense for your budget, and what makes sense for your customer. I think I sold something from them before. Okay, we got to remember this one. Espresso. Well, I'm not drinking espresso. I guess I gotta try one, but the ladies are having espresso martinis and I hope they're enjoying it. So it's day two of magic and I have to buy something today. I switched the money over into the inventory account, so it has to be spent. I am looking for new joggers because I can't keep selling the same ones that I have because everybody sells them at this point. So I'm looking for new joggers, new sweatpants, basically a new loungewear vendor that can maybe be like my second in line for that type of inventory. For Melrose, I gotta find some like cute dresses. I need some shorts because I have tops and I realized I never launched any pants, which makes no sense. So that is definitely gonna be top of the list for today. And I'm excited to spend some money. Oh. Oh. All right, so another question that I get asked all the time is what does it mean to buy strategically? So it is not about you just setting a budget. It is about you thinking about how you're going to spend that budget. One thing that we often don't realize is that we buy all this inventory for different prices and we might have a profit margin that we want all of the inventory to have, which means that all of the inventory is not gonna equally contribute to your sales and your revenue at the end of the day. 
So one thing that you want to make sure that you do when you're getting ready to buy your next collection or when you're coming to a trade show is clarify where the money is going to be spent. So you might be spending 60% of your budget on dresses because dresses contribute 60% to your revenue versus tops might contribute 30% to your revenue. So you're spending 30% of your budget on that. But that doesn't even take into consideration the pricing, how much you're going to spend and ultimately how you're going to allocate it across all of those categories. Not to mention, you might not need dresses. You might not need jumpsuits. You might not need shoes or accessories. So buying strategically basically means that you're taking the time to think about where you're going to spend the money and you're making a database decision versus making that decision purely off of emotion. So another question that boutique owners often ask is how do you know how much inventory to buy at a time? So what I would recommend is getting what's called an open to buy plan. An open to buy plan is basically a purchasing budget and it helps you to make sure that you have the right amount of inventory at the right period of time throughout the year. So I have an open to buy plan and it literally covers the entirety of the year and I know how much of every single product category that I need for every single month of the year. You'll be able to find out this information by studying your data, your analytics on your website, and you'll be able to see how much you sold in dresses, how much you sold in bottoms, how much you sold in tops, how much you sold in dresses, all of that throughout the year. And one thing that we often don't realize is that you may sell more let's say shorts, for example, in the summer because it's warm versus in the winter you're selling more sweaters and heavier, bulkier things. So by making an open to buy plan, you're creating a strategic plan for how much of one category you need in January versus how much you need of it is in September. So an open to buy plan is basically you taking into consideration what's available currently and what you need for the future. So every day people tell me that they want to start an online boutique but they're wondering what does it take? What does it take to be successful? So one thing I want you to know is that it's okay to be a beginner. You don't come into this industry knowing everything but there are some knowledge and skills and abilities that you may want to have when you come in. So one thing that is really important is just to have a level of creativity. Although we are entering into the industry of fashion, you have to be a marketer as well. You are going to be a social media manager, you are going to be an email marketer until you're able to hire somebody to do those jobs. And so that requires you to have some sense of creativity because in order for you to stand out in a heavily saturated industry, you have to be doing something different, you have to be doing something that's gonna stand out. Something else that you might wanna have is the ability to read analytics. You may not know what all of the things mean, you may not know what all of those numbers are for or you know how to use them in your business, but it is helpful to be able to look at them and analyze them and use them to your advantage. And another thing is gonna be communication because at the end of the day, you're trying to serve people and in order to do that, you have to be a great communicator. You have to be able to answer questions, you have to be able to handle conflict, you have to be able to handle issues, and you have to be able to do it professionally. You have to remember that your job is to serve people. So communication, learning to read your analytics, and creativity are going to be super duper helpful towards your ability to be successful as a new boutique owner. I got to split my brain right now between Brazen and Melrose. Yeah. This is where that open to buy plan comes into play. Dresses and jumpsuits. What month is this? February? So this is the crazy part about this open to buy plan. For March it says I need 27 dresses or jumpsuits, combination. But that's just based on how they sell for me. Cause I don't sell a lot of dresses. So like a lot of my budget doesn't get put into that. So I got like $337 that I can spend on dresses. That's it. On bottoms, let me tell y'all the difference. This is how crazy it is. On bottoms, I need 1100, yeah. That's how well I sell bottoms. I need 1,100 bottoms, but I need 27 dresses. <laughs> Crazy. Oh, I like this one better. This one? Yep. Spaceship star. Okay, so we have coffee latte. Mm -hmm. There's white, there's lime green, there's teal, and like a peach. Let's do one of each of those two. Okay, I got you. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, thank you. I got time today. So I bought something and we got 198 pieces total, $2,100 in one place. Yeah, so off to a good start. I got a ton of sweatpants, a few tops to pair with those sweatpants. But yeah, I'm excited now. I feel like I can go swipe my card some more. It's a good day. Yes, looking forward to spending some more money.
period.